Hi all, welcome back to Oops with C++ session 26. Okay, so in today's session, we will discuss about how the class will be compiled, the compilation process and the class definition table, what do you mean by this and where exactly the class will get memory and in which segment uh, um, functions will get memory and where exactly that class data members will get memory all these things we will discuss okay so now just let's start with our uh, uh, program previous program so that is uh, we have taken the class c employee and uh, we have created uh, two da function members set details display and two private members that is employee id and employee name so and we are giving the definition outside the class that is with the c employee scope set details and string copy employee id equals to id and void c employee scope display and we are displaying the employee id and employee name and in main uh, we are going to create the objects of uh, c employee class that is emp1 and emp2 two objects we are creating and by using uh, set details we are setting the values for employee 1 that is richie and 101 employee 2 we are setting the values store stop and 102 and at the same time we are displaying the employee 1 and employee 2 values okay objects values right so now how much memory will be allocated for this uh, uh, employee 1 and employee 2 or what is the size of these objects employee 1 and employee 2 it's a uh, total uh, size of non-static data members present inside this class so int employee id is one non-static data member that is four bytes for this and employee name one array that is 12 bytes totally so 4 plus 12 that is 16 bytes of memory will be allocated for this employee one and 16 bytes will be allocated for employee two and where it is allocated it depends on where you are creating the object so if uh, if i am creating the objects inside the, in the local scope then the objects will get memory in the local scope if you are creating the objects in a local scope means stack if you are creating the object globally then uh, the objects will get memory in data segment if you are creating the objects in he uh, by using pointers and uh, memory alloc uh, heap memory then the objects will get memory in heap so where the objects will get memory it depends on where you are creating the objects okay so now uh, let's see uh, if I have this class then how the assembly instruction will be generated assembly instructions means uh, it is uh, it consists of all the executable instructions uh, that will be so this class will be compiled and then the output of this compilation will be in the assembly instructions and that assembly instructions almost it is a executable instructions only so and that assembly instructions will be further converted into uh, ones and zeros that is final executable code that will be given to the CPU okay now uh, let's discuss uh, let's see step by step what will happen when I write class what will happen when I write the uh, function uh, functions okay so for that uh, let's discuss okay so now I'm just opening this uh, compiler explorer so here step by step I'm seeing so hash include I was stream hash includes string using namespace std so only for these lines these are the assembly instructions that is executable instructions generated in assembly okay same will be uh, given to um, uh, converted to binary then that binary will be given to CPU for the further execution okay so now uh, for this these are the instructions generated static initialization and destruction zero int int okay uh, sub uh, example dot cpp so okay we are least bothered about these things now okay these are the default instructions generated for this okay now uh, next step is i have given the class declaration so can you see class c employee public c employee where is the instructions for this i'm not seeing any instructions right if you observe hash include i was stream hash include c string using namespace std whatever instructions are there same instructions only here also right can you see is there any difference okay no difference means no assembly instructions generated for this class c employee public no assembly instructions no executable statements generated for this right now 
let's add the definition for these functions okay so now when i am adding the definitions void c employee details and void c employee display you can see right c employee details the executable instructions generated so these are in the code segment okay or text segment all executable instructions will be in text segment only or code segment okay so whatever in the assembly instructions you can see these are in text segment okay all these instructions code segment this is for set details now this is for display okay set underscore details and for display so um, for display what we have to do what are the um, methods we have to do what we have to call inside this function is there any calls what operations we have to do a string copy so if you see set details in set details one of the executable instruction what uh, one of the statement what we are doing is string copy so when you are doing string copy you can see the highlighted one here right here so when you are doing the string copy here this one move or ax kid uh, q w or d p t r okay so all these things uh, these are the executable instructions okay generated for the set underscore details how many functions are there only two functions so two times uh, so for this function this is the executable instruction and for display function this is one executable instructions one set here one set here okay so, so set underscore display function and the rest as usual so that uh, hash include i stream and using namespace std whatever we have given same assembly instructions here okay now uh, next is uh, we will so you have understood right <coughs> so here when we have only class right nothing is executed no, no assembly instructions uh, executed uh, sorry generated okay but as soon as i have added uh, functions so functions are getting the uh, information functions executable instructions are present here in the assembly code now so next thing is int main c employee emp1 emp2 so for this you can see in main only uh, the base pointer and stack pointer will be kept and no further operation is done because by, we, we have just created we are not doing anything okay so now what i'm doing is after this after this so how many bytes will be allocated here so uh, see uh, these two things i am creating uh, memory for this uh, employee 1 and employee 2 in stack segment so the memory will get uh, for these objects is in stack segment okay we are creating locally right we'll get memory for this in stack segment only okay so no operations we are doing so then it is coming for main nothing is there okay so now i will add another steps a employee one dot set details richie 101 employee two dot set uh, details richie 102 now if you see there is some modifications here push rbp rbp stack point sub stack point to 32 so means 32 bytes will be subtracted why 32 bits uh, 32 bytes emp1 is um, 16 bytes emp2 is the 16 bytes so stack pointer will be subtracted 32 bytes down so <coughs> so stack pointer will move from high to low memory right so 32 bytes it will move okay now how it will come to know 32 bytes i have to move is there any uh, instructions present here so 32 bytes for class employee nothing is there right no executable instruction but uh, how it is generated this one okay we'll come back to that so after that what we are doing employee one set details reach a 101 so for this if you see the red one highlighted one so you can see uh, you can see in the assembly code right so r uh, lea rx rbp minus 16 points i say 16 uh, it is moving 16 uh, bytes it is moving then it is assigning edx 101 esi so next uh, 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 this is to call to this set details function it is calling the set details function so next again if you see for um, the second object for second object these are the assembly instructions generated okay this one these are the assembly instructions generated for emp2 set details so after uh, setting the values i am just displaying emp1 dot display and uh, that is this one emp1 dot display you can see these instructions and emp2 dot display 
these two instructions okay so like this assembly instructions are generated but for which one for every line the assembly instructions are generated but what happened to the class okay so for class no assembly instructions generated right then whenever you are creating the object so how how it will come to know uh, how many bytes we have to allocate all those things right so for that we have something like class definition table okay so what is that so class definition table what will happen is during compilation process still assembly instructions are getting generated but during compilation process a temporary table will be created in the ram memory a temporary table will be created so whenever compiler encounters any class for that particular class one temporary table will be created that is called as class definition table and which consists of member name so what is the member name uh, all data members is consists of all non static data members informations like so where it is what is the name of that em this is employee id what is the data type of this it is integer how much size is there four bytes and offset where it is this is the first data member so our first data member is always zero so zero so next access specifier under which access specifier it is private so next what is there so member name employee name okay and character uh, so what is this character star or character array how many bytes 12 bytes okay offset 4 bytes access specifier uh, private okay now what is the total size total size is 16 bytes so like this one temporary table will be created and whenever you are creating the object so what it will do is based on this class definition table the compiler will generate a suitable assembly instructions here so uh, sorry whenever we are creating the object here the compiler will uh, generate suitable assembly instructions how many bytes of memory i have to allocate for object one and how many bytes i have to allocate for object two okay so and it will make an uh, it will uh, generate those assembly instructions based on this class definition table and it is a temporary table okay once this assembly instruction is getting generated then you you cannot see this class definition table anywhere that's the reason you cannot see any code related to any assembly instructions related to class employee okay once the assembly code is generated then done we don't want any class now okay so that's the reason we say class will class won't get memory but uh, which one will get memory only objects will get memory okay uh, you will be hearing class won't get memory it is just a blueprint it won't get memory objects will get memory why it won't get memory because during compilation class definition table will be created based on that class definition table assembly suitable assembly instructions will be generated how much memory it have we have to allocate for this object and how it has to be referred okay once the object creation process wherever you are creating the object so like this where the object creation process is there once everything is done then that class definition table will be removed and we won't be seeing anything related to that particular class okay now so once the object where it will where the objects will get memory it depends on where you are creating the objects so if you are creating the objects locally then you will get the objects memory in stack segment if you are creating the objects in global then the objects will get memory in data segment if you are creating the objects in heap then it will get memory in heap segment okay but irrespective of how many objects you are going to create okay each object will be having their own set of employee uh, data members that is employee one is having his own set of employee id and his own employee name employee two is having his own employee id and his own employee name okay that's uh, if you are creating 100 objects and all 100 objects will be having their own individual set of data members but here how many function uh, copies are generated okay so set details display you can see only once right only one set details uh, information and only one display function means irrespective of how many objects you are creating all the objects are going to share 
your own uh, uh, the single copy of the set details fun uh, function members like so i have created one object two objects three objects you can have multiple objects here but all these objects will make use of the assembly instructions generated for c employee set details same instructions and same instructions for display also so only one copy of the function members will be there but each object will be having his own set of their own set of data members just uh, remember this point data members and function members each object will have his own their own set of data members whereas all the objects will are going to share the single copy of the function members okay only one copy of set details will be there and only one copy of display function will be there now the question arises here is if it is only one set is there then how the object will come to know so uh, how the functions will come to know when i do set details i have to initialize employee one's data member if i say i have to set underscore details i have to initial initialize employee two's data members so you can see here right i have given emp1 set details okay i have given emp1 set details okay but so how it will come how it will come to know okay i have to go here so i have to minus here this is the memory location present this object is present in this memory location i have to go here i have to jump here and i have to do the modifications in this memory location or uh, if i say emp2 details set details how this uh, this one is come to know i have to set this say for example i am what i'm doing is i am just displaying i am first setting it so then displaying okay it's compiling compile okay so now you can see yeah so here set underscore details i am doing okay so next display so after that what i am doing set underscore details for employee 2 so i am not doing the proper operation right maybe i have called uh, set details here maybe after that somewhere else i am calling i uh, employ 10 set details like this but we have only one copy of set details function but how this uh, how these functions will come to know i have to work on this employee 1 i have to work on employee 2 when i say emp1 dot display how this display function will come to know i have to display employee 1 information how this display come to uh, comes to know i have to display employee 2 okay are we passing any address here just see so we are just giving richie 101 stores of 102 but how the uh, function will come to know okay so if you see here what are the um, right so only constant character star and int is there and here only display but these functions don't know because uh, we are not writing the code uh, so maybe i will be creating employee one i will be creating employee two we won't be knowing right so how many objects we are creating which object we are creating we don't know where that object is getting created but now these functions are capable to work on the individual objects separately how it is possible that's where the concept of this pointer will comes into picture okay now the, what is that this pointer that we will discuss in upcoming session okay so that's for today so before winding up just have a quick key points that is when the compiler encounters a class compiler will create a class definition table that is cdt it's temporarily and this consists of the information about the non-static data members present in the class and their access specification that is private or protected or public so that is the reason during compile time only if you are trying to access any private members you will get the error because access specification information it is cross checking so where is this particular member is present whether it is present in private or protected then uh, give the error 
okay next while compiling the function members compiler will do name mangling so we have discussed about this the name mangling previous sessions name mangling for the functions and the function name will be entered in the symbol table and suitable assembly instructions will be generated for the function definition which will get memory in code segment all the function definitions will get memory in the code segment only all executable statements will get memory in code segment or text segment so whenever the object creation line is encountered by the compiler then compiler refers to the suitable class definition table and based on the suitable assembly instructions will be generated that's where the object should get memory okay how it will get memory so wherever you are um, uh, this encounters this line there it will refer the class definition table and we'll get the memory so the class definition table is removed from the memory after compilation of the compilation process that's why we say class won't get memory only objects will get memory so class is just a blueprint okay so it is like this so if you have one if you are constructing one house you take the blueprint check the blueprint whenever you are constructing uh, check the blueprint and construct it once uh, house construction is done you can throw your blue blueprint anywhere you want or you can keep it aside also okay now irrespective of how many objects we create all the objects will share a single all the objects will share a single set of function members of that class okay so that is uh, this is the thing that is the key points here so but now how the functions will differentiate uh, which object i have to invoke that will be based on this pointer and what is this pointer and what are these applications of this pointer that we will speak in upcoming session so that's for today thanks for watching